let's dive in to what we're going to chat about this week here on the Thoughtful Thursday with Thoughtful Thursday on Do It Podcast. I've got a lot of thoughts lately. A lot of them are still connected to this book, The Anxious Generation. I have obviously devoured it, read it, been talking about it online. Reminder, I don't get paid to talk about it. I've just been really inspired by it and have connected a lot of my Do It podcasts to the topics in this book because I think they're that important. It has it is now available for you to purchase online. So your bookstores, so go grab it, The Anxious Generation. And something that I wanted to chat about today to get your thoughts on are how do you stay consistent? I'm going to share a couple of things I've been trying to do while I'm on the road. I've been on the road now two weeks, kind of lost track of how many cities that I've been in. Uh, but I did a couple of things to try to set myself up for success when I came on this trip. One is something that I think might be helpful to all of you if you don't already do it. When I have uh, specific goals that I want to achieve or maybe a routine that I'm trying to implement, I tell somebody about it. I don't tell everybody about it because not everybody was going to be supportive. Some people will like shame you and blame you for not being consistent, or they don't really know the kindest way to remind you to get back on track. So select your person uh, with uh, accordingly, find somebody who, you know, has your back and, and will be a positive, uh, a positive impact uh, reminder for you. So I, made sure to tell this person a couple of things that I wanted to stay consistent with while I was on the road. And something I've just learned over time is that it's so good to write down your goals. It's so go good to think about routines that you want to implement. But when we tell somebody, when we say them out loud, there's just another layer of accountability that happens. And so I highly encourage that if you're trying to stay consistent when you travel or you're trying to implement a, a new routine, tell somebody and then you're, just your odds increase is what I've noticed. Something else that I've done is even I knew I was going to be in different time zones. I knew that during part of these travels, I really wasn't going to be on my own schedule that I, I was around people and I was going to have to be a little bit more flexible in my day and my timing of things. But what I did was I put a list together of things that I wanted to do every day and the amount of time that I wanted to spend on them. And then when I did them, I got to do one of my favorite things, which is just like check the, I love doing that. No, I haven't done those yet. So I'm going to go back. <laughs> but those are really, I love checking things off. So having this, and I didn't tell, I didn't say it had to be at 5 a.m. or 8 a.m., or anything. I, it was just how many minutes I was going to spend on these things that were important to me. For example, one thing is I wanted to spend at least 60 minutes on big idea work. A lot of time uh, with my work, I'll get just so caught up in the minutia of, and the, like, the littlest things with WIT and with my other company, 360 Self. And I don't make time for the, just like the big idea work that I want to do and just the brainstorming and creative time that I want. So I may, I always make sure to have that on my list and uh, that's been helpful. So telling people, telling someone what I wanted to stay consistent with during these two weeks on the road, making this list that was not married to exactly like specific times of day, but more the amount of minutes I wanted to spend on work on certain things has been helpful. Uh, what about you? I want your thoughts on this. How do you stay consistent when things get a little crazy? You may not be on the road. That might not be how things get crazy for you, but you might be a teenager who gets, who is in testing season and I, and exam season, SAT prep, whatever, all that stuff. How are you still taking care of yourself and staying consistent with your goals? I would love, I would just, I'd love to know. Uh, something else that I have been thinking about is I know the last couple of podcasts that I've done have been about uh, the teenage perspective on school, homework, smartphones, and uh, social media. But this week, I was really curious about parents and, and your perspectives. And the reason why is yesterday, I went out to lunch. I met somebody new. This is He's a father of two boys, 11-year-old and 14-year-old, and neither of them have social media. And it's the first parent actually that I've met, uh, whose children don't have access to social media. 
So if you're a parent who has not given your kids access to social media, teenagers love to hear from you, love to know how that conversation is going in your house and how it's been for you and for them. But I asked this father, like, how did you do that? I was so curious, like, how did you make that happen? And he very just nonchalantly said, well, it's not good for them and I'm the parent. And so it's my job to make sure that I don't give them access to things I know that aren't good for them. Then he went back to, to eating his salad. And I was just thinking like, it was so simple. And yet it, it's not, it's, it is challenging for some parents. And a lot of times it's because other kids' parents are giving them access to these things. And so how, what is it going to feel like if your kid stands out by not having access or are they just going to get access when they go over to that person's house? And so then maybe it's better if you educate them on how to use social media responsibly. Do we even know how to implement social media responsibly? The wonderful news is, and Jonathan talks about it in the book, is not all hope is lost. There are still things that we can do, especially as adults and educators and parents. So like, again, please, please check out that book. But I'm curious, um, your thoughts, parents who are listening to this episode, how are you navigating the social media conversation in your home and even the smartphone conversation in your home? Are there tools that you've used that you've created as a family that have really worked? I'd love to know. Maybe you could comment on that. That'd be really helpful. Also, and I don't usually do this on my podcast, but I am working on an article. Of, some of you know, I, I write, I'm a contributor to Forbes and I have a Today Show blog, but I'm working on an article for my Forbes column about homeschooling. Pros, cons, experiences. I'd love to hear from parents that are homeschooling their kids. I, it'd be great to get um, to talk to teenagers that are being homeschooled and getting their opinion on it. Don't have to use your full name if you're not comfortable with that, but I would love to hear your experience. So I thought, why not use my podcast as a as, as a way to get uh, information and potentially uh, people that I can interview. So that's that's it for Thoughtful Thursday, quick, fast uh, podcast episode. Just juggling life on the road right now, like I said, right now in Miami. Would love to hear your thoughts on how you stay consistent and how you stay on track when things are go a little bit um not the norm in your life. Also, if you're a parent, I'd love your thoughts on how you are navigating the social media conversation in your home. And last but not least, if you're at all involved in the homeschool community, I would love to um, hear from you about your experience, why you homeschool your kids. If you're a kid, what your thoughts are about the homeschool experience. And perhaps you'll end up in my next uh, Forbes article. I hope wherever this finds you, finds you making it a great day. And if it's not a great day right now, that's okay. It's not too late to turn it around. One of the ways I recommend turning it around is implementing what we call the WIT3. Do something for yourself, do something for somebody else, and do something for your big ideas and dreams. Take action on all three things, all of those three things, and uh, I guarantee your day will turn around. Okay, until next time, keep doing whatever it takes. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Do It Podcast. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment with your takeaways. And if you want to join WIT, you can check out our summer classes at doingwit.org. And maybe we'll see you on the podcast and in our classes. Keep doing WIT.